Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Gould, and welcome to the studio control room where today I'm going to go through the various positions uh, that, um, and jobs and roles here in the control room. Now, I'm recording in both standard video and in 360 video, so I'm not sure which one you'll be watching, but with 360 you get to see the full and complete control room. And I will try to get you close-ups where I can, but it's difficult because of the situation uh, with just singing, uh, doing this by myself. This is what we call a single camera. Right over there, one camera, one shot. Very hard to get the cutaways. This 360 camera, also a single camera, even though it records the full and complete room. Again, though, I can't get the close-ups that I need because I only have the one camera. What we have here behind me is what we call a multi-camera setup, which means more than one camera. In this case, we have four camera inputs. We also have other character, um, sorry, uh, we have a character generator. We have uh, other video inputs, and we have some still images also coming in uh, to the studio. All of those um, sources feed into what we call a switcher, and I will light it up, and boom, it's like, it's like um, for, uh, I was gonna say 4th of July, but uh, we do Canada Day. It's like Canada Day, Canada Day there, and the switcher will light up uh, when, it's, uh, when it's not sleeping. So that is the switcher position. So all of the sources, uh, actually all the sources come into the switcher, and then they're displayed up here on the monitors for the director to uh, select from. Now, you will see PV. This is short for preview. This is where we preview the shot. Anything that comes up on this monitor is a previewed shot. Uh, on this monitor over here, we have a program monitor, uh, program shot right there. So program is what's actually going out on air. And if you look, you'll see a red line around it, which means this is what's going to air. Now, right now we're feeding black. So on the switcher, I can see I've got black. Uh, my camera sources are turned off, but I can select a uh, picture of Oprah. So now Oprah is going out to air, but I didn't actually preview that, and I will explain the switcher to you later how that works. But the director is the one that selects the images and um, creates the show via the, the, the shots. Even though we only have three or four cameras here, pretty much every multi-camera shoot is essentially a three-camera shoot, but just with more cameras and covering more space. There's different types of multi-camera productions. There is a live production, which is like a sports Academy Awards, an awards show, something like that. These are live productions that when they are being aired, that's, um, they're just going live and then they go out and everybody watches them. Usually there's some kind of a delay in case there's a, a problem or a, a language issue. Somebody says something they shouldn't. Um, and that is something that is a live production. We have something that's also called a live to tape and that's where we record uh, <clears throat> like it's a live show to tape and um, also in terms of the time, we keep it to the time that we're supposed to keep it to. Uh, with live to tape, <clears throat> we can also use what's called an ISO camera or an isolated camera. And with each of our multi, uh, multiple cameras, we can actually have a recorder on each camera. <clears throat> we can do a live switch, but we can go back and tweak it a little bit um, or um, we can enhance the edit a little bit later on with some editing if we didn't quite get the, the cut right. But with live production, what you are cutting and selecting, boom, if you miss it, it's gone and it is finished. Uh, in single camera production, which is what I'm planning to do with these particular cameras, is I will take them later and edit them. I will try to edit some stuff in best I can, uh, and I can do that after the fact. With multi-camera, you cannot. There's a lot more adrenaline in multi-camera, typically, and that's not always true. I've been on some single camera shoots that are pretty exciting, but generally what you're going to find is a multi-camera shoot is it's there, it's live, it's, it's, everything is active and everything is going. Um, and you are also gonna find that um, it's, um, it, it's the director that drives the show, but just before we get to the director, in the back row, if you're watching on 360, turn around and look behind us, right where those computer monitors are, um, we're going to pretend that producer's back there, but the producer is the person who obtains the property right, uh, gets the rights for the show, and they hire a writer, let's say they want to do, I don't know, just pick a, a live show, maybe it's a game show they want to do, they see it in Britain, they buy the rights to it in Canada, and they will hire a writer to write a, a, um, a show for us. They will also hire a, um, I'm just going to check my shot, am I good? Yes, I'm still there on 360 and on uh, standard video. But the producer will hire the, 
the writer, they will also hire the director. And the director is the person that's going to give the creative vision uh, for the particular product or uh, production. Uh, sometimes the producer will hire the crew, but that isn't always the case. It depends on, um, on the producer. Um, but the producer is the person that controls the money. They hire the director and say, this is sort of what I want. Now, this is why directors have different styles. You get to look at their sizzle reel. You get to watch what they've produced and, or what they've directed. And you say, I like the way that person works and I like the style of their, um, of their productions. And so they will hire the director. And a good producer will delegate control of the production to the director and is not involved with the creative vision. The aesthetic look um, uh, of, of the show... Um, is, for the, is with the director. So the director will then work with um, the department leads, the lighting director, the technical director, the production designer, the production designer, uh, who is responsible for the sets. Those are the department leads that the, the director will, um, uh, will work with. Uh, and there's a lot of pre-development that goes into a multi-camera production. Uh, this is true with single camera as well, uh, but with multi-camera, it's not just we just show up and we start shooting. You need to look at a script. You need to block out a script, which means you're going to select your cameras, your sources in advance, and then when you get there, you will have a script in front of you, and I have many, many scripts here, but a block script basically is when I have, um, you can see it here, a block script is when I... Uh, color code my script and I have the first w the, the one column is video and this column on the right is audio and then I will color code who does what in terms of the director or the script assistant or the associate director. The, the script assistant, which I'll get to in a minute, is uh, we call that person the associate director, some other things as well. And um, uh, that's the person that works with the director. But just to finish up on the director, the director is the one that drives the bus, that drives the car, that says this is the way we're going to go. And in a live production, you're watching your shots, you're calling your cameras, uh, you are using the block script to drive the car. But let's say, for example, camera three is not ready and you know you're going to camera three. This is live. We don't have time. Maybe three is out of focus, not ready to go. You have to be ready to substitute something else in case three is not there for you. And this is where um, you get into a situation where you get to know your camera people and you're nice to your camera people because they work hard. A lot of productions nowadays have robotic cameras where the director also will control the camera so that if camera three is not ready, the director is the one that will have to tweak it and fix it uh, or the technical director or whoever's controlling your cameras. So the director has a lot on their shoulder and the person that will help the director is this person to their, to their left, my right. Uh, that is the person that we call the script assistant, script supervisor, or the term that I like to call them is the AD, the associate director, the associate director. And that's the person that times the show. You'll see down here we have a timer. And this timer has a start and stop. You start this, the, the show time when we fade up from black and you, there's a stop button and you stop that when we fade uh, to black at the end of the show. And again, a reminder, terminology is critical. The director's communication is critical. You have to make sure that you are uh, explaining your shots right or calling it correctly. I'm ready to, ready to fade up on camera two. A fade is from black or white. You fade up, you fade down. You don't fade between pictures. You do a fade uh, from black or from white. You dissolve or do a cross dissolve uh, between, uh, say, camera two and camera three. Ready to dissolve to camera three, dissolve to camera three. That means we already have a source up and running on the monitor. We are not sitting in black, which is what we are doing now. So um, the script assistant, the, the AD, they time the show. They work with the director. They take notes in meetings. They go to all of the meetings. They actually, in a pinch, could take over for the director if something happens. The director is taken ill or misses a bus or something. The AD can step in and do the show because they know the show, uh, the script, as well as or better than the director because they've studied it, they've memorized it, and they're going to be giving us calls. They're going to call the cameras. They're going to ready the cameras for the director. They're going to tell the director which is the next camera, which we will talk about in a minute. So the director is looking up here. Uh, heads up, directing is the way to do it. Keep it and watch your sources. The AD, they're the ones focusing on the script. Sometimes they're even just turning the page for the director because the director's not looking down. They just turn the page. They turn the page. And so the director can track along um, when they need to look down uh, to get the script. The other thing that you're going to see here is we have, uh, again, program. This is what's going out and the preview. So when the director readies the shot, they will ready camera one, let's say, although there's nothing on that source. Um, Let's ready an image, so they're, they're going to ready, let's say this was camera one, so ready camera one, 
and then they take camera one and camera one then appears on the program. What's on the preview? That is actually uh, not going out uh, to air yet. It's the program that we're going to be uh, really concerned with. If, if something is wrong here, something is wrong in our program. Uh, the way it used to be in the olden days, the olden days is black and white was the, the order of the day for most TV studios. Uh, televisions were very expensive, color televisions. So all the camera, all the, uh, the input sources would be black and white. And then the, pre the preview monitor was typically color as was the program monitor. So if the director wanted to see a shot, they would call it on the preview, shot, the preview monitor, which is, as you can see, larger. It would come up in a larger full color screen, which the director could then, um, if, they didn't, uh, if they wanted to change it, they could do that. Um, but the director will be able to see it in preview. And this is what's next. So when you're directing, you know whatever's sitting in this window here. So let's say uh, I'm going to ready um, the next shot. Again, let's pretend these are cameras. So um, I have the next person ready to come in. And uh, so, but, but this is green, this is next, but it's not actually on air. What is going on air is the program monitor, um, and that's what people are seeing. And the thing with the director is the director, if you're not careful, um, you will call the wrong cameras. If you're not paying attention, you might miss something. You might go to a camera. If your head is down, you might say, ready, camera three, take three, and maybe three is out of focus. Um, and if you are a camera person and you do hear the director say, ready, camera two, they actually mean, get ready, camera two. Uh, they're also telling the switcher, we're going to go to camera two. But camera two needs to say, oh, I'm, I'm ready next. Stop moving if you're setting up your shot or quickly get your focus ready because you're the next one that is going to be called uh, on, um, on for uh, your shot. And you're going to be the one that's going to be on air. And um, the other thing, too, is um, when we're driving a show, the, the reason that we, we run a show so tightly is because it costs a lot to run a studio production. If you look around, you'll see the equipment that's in the room, the, 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 this, the technical um, elements, uh, the production staff, these, the training, and, and it's very, very expensive to do a television show. And um, that's, again, another reason why we have the associate director, just in case there's a problem uh, with, the, um, uh, with the director. Something happens, and again, the director can um, maybe get sick. Uh, the, the, the AD can step in and um, take over it. So a block script is super important. One last thing I'd like to say about the director, and that is the communication is critical. Everything that you say must be clear and concise. And uh, also, I find a calm tone is very helpful when you're in the control room, that you're not ah, freaking people out. Ah, ready, one, go to one, take one, two, three, wah, 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 wah. Right? People get really nervous, as do I. So be careful of that. Um, but what, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the communication is clear, not just between uh, you and the crew. And the way that we speak to the crew is through the intercom, which you can see right here. And I can talk to the different departments that, that we have. I can talk to my floor director. I can talk to my audio department. Everything is controlled through here. Now, there's a red light that's on right here. When I turn the red light on, that kills the intercom, and it means that this microphone is no longer, um, uh, is no longer active. So uh, red means off in this case, and uh, sorry, red, when the red light is on, it means that we have absolutely um, no communication to, to any of our departments. Uh, red light on there, so that make, make sure that's off, but you also have to turn on the different areas that you want to speak to. Uh, also, too, it's a very good idea to watch what you say anywhere in a studio, whether it's on the floor because we have mics that are on or in the studio control room, uh, even if you're alone. So right now I'm alone in this control room, but somebody might be listening into control room C uh, because our intercoms are connected. And so you want to make sure that what you're saying is always appropriate and, um, uh, and be careful of, uh, again, if you're having an issue with people, take it outside or do it outside of uh, a place that has not got a microphone on it. Um, communication is also important here. So what the script assistant is going to do is they are going to let the camera know, or the director know, what is coming up. So once we get going, the, um, the first shot the director will ready with the switcher, my first shot will be, and that you tell the switcher what that first shot will be. But the, um, the script assistant will watch to see what the second shot is. So shot two, in this case of script I'm looking at here, the script person, the AD, will say, ready two on camera three. Ready shot two on camera three. We often abbreviate that ready two on three. But ready, ready shot two on camera three. So I know it's the second shot on my camera card, on my master shot list. Uh, I'm, it's camera two, and or shot two rather, and it's on camera three. So uh, ready shot two on camera three. The director will then say ready three. 
when you're readying a camera, you do not need to ready with the switcher the framing. I wouldn't say ready a wide shot in camera three. The switcher does not need to know that. The camera people know that because they have the camera cards which show uh, what their framing should be. And then again, as a director, you're going to watch those shots and make adjustments as you watch it. Let's say something doesn't quite look right, maybe too much headroom. Camera three, tilt down a little bit, you have a bit too much headroom. Camera one, tilt it up a little bit. Camera one, pan left, pan right. Be very descriptive like that rather than saying uh, more headroom one, maybe they'll zoom out on you and you don't want them to zoom out. You just actually wanted them to, um, to just tilt the camera up a little bit. So do make sure that your communication is clear with the, uh, with the, with the people that you're working with. So the script person will say, Ready, ready shot two in camera three, or ready two on three. The director will say, ready camera three. Now, the script person, the AD, you don't need to lean into the microphone. Keep, keep back. Also, too, is when you're directing, just talk uh, at a normal distance from the microphone. If you lean in in every shot, it will get really loud in your crew's ears, and nobody will appreciate the blasting sound that they get. Uh, while they're trying to um, work on the floor. And if it's also too loud, there could be bleed through uh, the microphones on the floor, which we're also trying to avoid. So just sit back, talk normally, ready one, take one. And um, uh, oftentimes directors will wear headphones uh, with the microphone on it, so as they move their head around, the volume is consistent all the way through. So uh, the, the AD is going to cue the, the director. The other thing that we do is at the very beginning of our show, the AD is also going to work with the director on the protocol. So we have a rehearsal protocol and we have a record product protocol, and that they're, they're different. So the director will say, ready to rehearse. Then the script assistant, the AD, will lean in or not and just say, um, is the floor ready, right? Are the cameras ready? Crew audio ready, graphics ready, right? So script the floor, ready. Script the camera, are you ready? Script the audio, are you ready? Graphics ready. Each department will respond. You wait until you get a response. The cameras will actually nod up and down visually. They will not actually audibly respond unless you ask them to. Um, and then once you've got the shots, the director maybe doesn't like a shot, camera three, okay. Once three acknowledges that they're ready, I might say, okay, I don't like shot two, fix, you know, and explain what I want to do with shot two. And then the director, once uh, they've done that, uh, they will then acknowledge, uh, they'll advise the switcher of their first shot. My first shot will be a fade up on camera two, a fade up on camera two. It's all good. Once I'm ready, I'm comfortable to go. The director then says, stand by. And standby means the train is leaving the station. Once the director says standby, the script person says program up in 10, 9, 8. And it's a real count. It's a real 10 second count. It's not 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It is a 10 count. If we have a DDR, which is our video roll, uh, which you'll see over here, um, the uh, actually none of them are labeled. This they, they, these are all programmable, but we usually have um, uh, playback video playback uh, on the monitors over here, and uh, there will be a pre-roll number. So in uh, some of our shows, there's a five count. So you'll see the number five, and uh, if you're rolling a DDR, you're going to watch here program up in five, right? Four, three, two, one. You're going to base it on the count of the video. But when you're going just to the camera, the script assistant, the, the AD director says, stand by. And the AD says, program up in 10, 9, 8. Write down to 5, 4, 3, 2. And as we're getting close to the bottom of the count, the director will say, ready to fade up on 2. And 1, fade up on 2. Cue music, cue talent, cue script, right? Or cue sound effects. And as we fade up, the script person is going to start the timer right here. Let's reset this starting. Boom, the show running time is going. This person, the AED, is also going to time the show and as we go along uh, they will say things like commercial out uh, in uh, one minute or 30 seconds and then uh, when we get to the end of the program they will say commercial out so let's say it's a minute 30 commercial so at one minute and 20 seconds the AED will count us out. Program out in 10, 9, Eight. You're going to give us the last 10 seconds. So if it's a longer production, you're going to give us other time cues. Um, but this, these are general things. Anything that I tell you here are generally how things work. Different directors do things differently. Different production houses do different things differently, studios, etc. But generally, that's how you're going to do it. But you, you always want to know, typically, when's your last minute? One minute left. 
and program out in 10, 9, because the, t the train is coming into the station. So that's how we would rehearse the, the production. Uh, there's also a record protocol, and what the pr record protocol does, instead of saying ready to rehearse, the director will say ready to record. Now, when we record, there's a slight difference. So the AD will go through the checks, floor ready, camera, audio, graphics, are you all ready? Once they've acknowledged yes, it means we're good to go. The director will then say record and confirm, generally to the people in the back row that are running the, the digital recorder, um, and the DDR operator. So they then say recording, they confirm that it is going, and if you're the DDR recorder or uh, operator, make sure that the, the numbers are moving and that you are getting actually recording. Um, and then the director will say to graphics to bring up the slate, and the slate will come up. You're gonna hold the slate for three seconds. Make sure it comes up. Three, two, one, lose the slate. And we have a slate protocol as well, uh, which is available online, but it should, it'll show you uh, the director's name, uh, what take it is, general information like that, the date, um, uh, the production name, basically um, everything that you need to know. So if I'm watching this video uh, two years from now, I'll know when it was recorded, who it was recorded, and what program it was for. Um, lose the slate, and then the director says to the switcher, my first shot will be a fade up on two, stand by. The minute the director says stand by, again, the AD will then say program up in 10, nine, eight, counts us down to zero. The director says whatever, fade up on two, uh, uh, cue music, cue talent, etc. And we are on our way to uh, producing a fabulous production. So that's these two people, communication, super important. Intercom uh, protocol, also very important. Director to audio, director to floor, right? When you're talking to people through the intercom, you don't just say, hey, audio. You need to tell them who it is that's calling. Maybe audio has something they want to know. Audio to floor, and then they will uh, talk like that because that way uh, everybody knows who is um, being communicated to. So that's um, two of the most important positions, the director and the... Um, uh, uh, the AD, the script assistant. Now, people will say, well, what about the switcher? And then here's the other thing about most important. Uh, what you quickly realize is um, it's a team thing. Nobody's most important. There are people that do jobs that are maybe more, maybe on some levels are important because they, they have more responsibility. They're, they're programming, uh, you know, they're, they're blocking the script, they're working with the, the talent, that kind of stuff. But no job uh, in our production is unimportant. Uh, if the switcher doesn't show up, it's a problem. If the teleprompter person doesn't show up, that's a problem. These are all mission critical positions, uh, but just they do different things. So the director is, again, the person that's sort of at the center of it. Uh, let's look at the switcher, and that's the person that is uh, sitting next to um, the director. You'll see the director's in the middle. Again, please don't squeeze in if you are the uh, script assistant or the AD. Don't squeeze in on the director. Um, because they don't, uh, you need to give them uh, some space. So um, what the switcher is, and that's this position here, the switcher is an instantaneous edit. So instead of using Premiere Pro to cut and move things on the video tracks, when you s select a, uh, an image on the switcher, it will actually um, switch it over a, uh, right away. And as I said, whatever we're seeing up on the, uh, on the program is what you're actually going to be uh, recording. So unless you have an ISO uh, setup where you are actually isolated recording each of your cameras, uh, which is not the case for the, most of our productions, uh, certainly in the introduction level, we're just taking what we've got and that's, we're gonna live with what we've got as well. And so down here we have the, um, the switching job. Now, uh, this switcher will change colors. Uh, typically it's blue on one side, a blue and yellow or blue and gold or whatever. Uh, don't worry about the colors and we've got it set to just one standard color right now, but uh, it's important to realize that you actually have two identical sets of a uh, row of keys. The keys, they're called buses, a bus. This row is called the preview bus, right? And then you have the program bus and then you have the key bus, and then you have uh, another row of keys which um, relates to the key bus and how, uh, what keys you are selecting. Um, but you'll see that these buttons down here have, have counterparts, the exact same buttons on the top part of the switcher. These rows together are called an MLE, and the MLE, um, uh, multiple layered effects, um, 
the uh, the MLE, they're layered in the sense that um, this is MLE1 and this is MLE2. MLE1, MLE2. Uh, and if you know anything about Premiere Pro or Photoshop, um, if you're using Premiere Pro and Photoshop, they use the layering. So you have the base layer or you have, say, Video Track 1, and then you put a, a video on Video Track 2. Well, um, when, it, when the video's playing, when it comes to Video Track 2, it takes precedent. It actually switches from Video Track 1 image to Video Track 2. So 2 takes precedent over 1. This is also true in Photoshop, the, the different layers. 2 is uh, on top of 1. 3 is on top of 2. So it's the same way here. This is the base MLE, MLE 1 and we have MLE2. You will see a button on the switcher that says MLE1, and so when I want, I can um, select MLE1 on the lower bus, uh, or the lower MLE here on MLE2. So I can set an effect on, uh, up here. Um, I can set it to a chroma key effect or a box key or something like that, and then um, when I need it, I just simply push one button on the switcher that says MLE1, and when I do that, boom, it accesses all the top rows of buttons. So I'm just gonna show you again very, very quickly, even though it looks complicated, it actually looks pretty cool, I think. I love the switcher. Um, the bottom row again is called a preview bus. So the top row, when we're doing effects, this MLE1, we will get there when we get there. If I need to do an effect, I can do that and then again access it through the lower row. But um, generally we're just using the lower set of keys. Preview bus here. And the way I work the preview bus is the director will say ready camera one, so I ready camera one on the preview bus. The light changes. And on this side of the switcher, you'll have your transitions. Your transitions say cut and auto trans. These are the two you need to be concerned about. You'll also see a fader bar, which is basically a transition, but the auto trans does the same transitions, but um, it's a set time, whereas the fader bar, you decide how fast. Actually, here I can show you with these two pictures. I think we can see here, right? If I do a, a manual fader, uh, I can decide how slow I'm gonna do the transition, but if I hit auto trans, you'll see it's a set time. And if I look in this little window, it says ME15. Well, 15 means 15 frames, and so when I hit the transition, it's a 15 frame transition, a 15 frame uh, dissolve, which I have set up right here. It says dissolve. I can do a, a, a wipe again. So there's the wipe. And you can do a digital video effect, uh, right? It takes the whole image out. But uh, mostly what we do is either a dissolve or a straight cut. So these are the transitions that we're gonna use. So ready to take, uh, ready to take one, take as a cut. Ready to take one, I go to camera one, and take one, and I push the cut button, and it will switch the camera on. Now again, these cameras are off. My apologies about that, uh, the studio is dark. So we're just gonna run with what we've got, but let's pretend there's an image on one. You will actually see um, here, uh, it's, uh, one is on the preview window, it's green for preview, and when I hit take, cut, it puts it in the program window. The box around one goes red, and the program window also goes red. Now, if I want to change the auto trans time, let's say I find that 15 frames is too slow or too fast, I can then go into here, change the MLE rate. Let's make it a, a 20 frame transition, so 20 enter. And now when I hit the auto trans button, let's put images that you can see. When I hit the auto trans, again, you see a very slow, I can even slow it down more. Let's make it, uh, MLE 30 frames, enter. Hard to do this upside down. Oops, uh, it's gone completely. And I can do the auto trans like this. Oh, I've turned the key on, that's why. There we go. So um, when you're doing a workshop, it's really hard to do it upside down. Let's turn the key off. I'll come to the key in a minute. So there's my two uh, sources and the super slow transition. So 30 frames a second. 29.97 actually, but we, have, we, asked, we rounded up to 30 frames a second. So I can select the uh, MLE rate here. Let's go back to 15 frames and enter. And now it's set back to the speed that we want. Again, this is something the director can say, slow it down, speed it up. The one thing I like about the fader bar is when I'm working with the switcher, I'll say, and fade it out. I'll kind of show that person 
and fade it down. This is the speed that I want to go. It's like directing an orchestra. Um, so you have um, MLE1, which is what we use for effects, and MLE2 is the one that we're actually uh, cutting it on. Ready camera one and take one. And I hit the transition here, the cut. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, show you the keys. So the program row, um, if anything I push in this row actually goes right out to the, to the program. So you have to be very, very careful. I don't generally hot switch like that. I don't generally just, oh, let's go one, ready, two. The nice thing with the preview is you can set it up and if you push the wrong button down on the lower row, you're not actually messing anything up because we haven't taken that camera yet or that source. So you have to be careful of that. But in the second row here, this is when we actually take the transition. It moves whatever is in the preview row into the program row and then puts it on air. And again, forgive me that we're not seeing those sources, but I will show you here. So I have... Uh, camera t uh, a source here and when I take it it puts it over into the program and it's now what's going to air or what's being recorded and again unless we isolate record our cameras if I miss the edit I miss the cut that's it you take what you get and that's part of where the adrenaline comes in now <clears throat> this other row here is the key row so what are keys? So you'll see there's a set of buttons here. There's different types of keys. There's an auto select key. And what that does is it allows me, it, it's a composite uh, effect. There's an alpha channel and a fill channel. And what it will do is it will cut something out. Let's see if I can actually do that with, um, again, somebody has reset all of my um, uh, um, sources on the switcher. Uh, these are all programmable. You can program it for different things and different people will use the switcher. Advanced classes use it for different things. We had an advanced class in last week. So, so here's a source on green and if I want to do a key, I, instead of using the background uh, area, so in this area here it says transition B background. So this is going to uh, allow me, to, when it's on background I can switch uh, on the lower row no problem. But when I go to key, it's going to look for a source from the top row, not the bottom row. So when I turn the key on, now let's see if it's going to do it. Um, it's not actually keying it over because I don't have anything on the character generator, but um, generally what it will do is uh, it will allow me to um, key over uh, a, um, a source. So if I have a character generator that has lettering, I can uh, cut out a key, it's like a, a cutout, and it will put those letters over top of my video source or whatever I've got up there. So if I have a, a, a character on there, a uh, title I want to bring in, I can do that uh, by selecting the character generator in the key row and then making sure the key is on and I can turn it on here. But again, there's nothing, so, uh, no, nothing feeding from the key uh, right now. I'm really surprised it doesn't let me key out the green um, the, the text there, maybe it's uh, too, uh, let's see, but no, it's, um, we tried. But anyways, that's what, the, the key will uh, take a character generation, uh, generated um, image, choose generally letters, text, a font, a logo, and we can put it on top of our source. And we use the auto select key for that. The chroma key is when we actually select, oh, it did something there. Uh, it, we, let's see, the chroma key, if I go to chroma key here, this might, I might be able to do it. I'm going to chroma key to blue, and then let's see if I can initialize that. And it does that. So what it's done is it's cut out the blue. Now, uh, let me not confuse you because if I change the background here, uh, okay, that's a little easier to see. So because there's blue in that uh, shot, but if you look at the RTA green, uh, this... He, um, source down here. It's got a blue background. Uh, let's see if I can do it here. So you see it's got a blue background and what I've done is when I chroma key it, I can actually uh, chroma key out the blue and it's just keeping the white lettering. So a chroma key cuts out the chroma, the color, and I can select what color I want to do that uh, on the switcher here. And a um, again, the auto select key, what that does is it will cut out white, black letters, that kind of stuff, and do the same effect. So in that case, uh, because it didn't work with the auto select, the composite of a key where you have, again, an alpha channel, the main source, and the fill, uh, I'm actually just using the chroma key to cut out the blue, and I've got the same effect. I'm able to put title 
over top of my, of my subject, and that's a key. And again, the way we turn the key on is over here. This is the trickiest part of switching, I found, is that what people will do is they will turn on the key, then they'll go to back to background, which allows me to change the, the, what's behind uh, the source, right? Uh, but they won't, uh, they won't uh, remember to take the key off. So you have to push the key button, and then you can either take it on and off, so that's a cut, lose key, take key, or I can do a transitional uh, softer look where the key dissolves in, right, and dissolves out. So it comes in and lose the key, right? So you would decide before if you want a hard cut on the, uh, on the key or something a little softer. And welcome to RTA Head to Head. Thanks for watching Fade It Out or uh, Fade to Black. Um, uh, so that's generally how the switcher works. Preview, program, key, row, a key bus. Again, the rows are called buses, B-U-S. This is where I select my key up here. And the other thing we do with chroma key in some of our shows is when people are standing in front of a green background or a blue background, we can get rid of that background and put a, a source of some kind, a video, a picture, something, something like that behind the shot for them. Um, so it looks like they're in a baseball field or something like that. You see it all the time uh, in news with weather. People love the weather uh, with the chroma key. Um, so switcher, you're the person that selects the pictures. And again, um, the key that you saw here, this chroma key, I can actually set the key up in this set of buttons up here. What's this called again? This is the MLE1 and this is MLE2. MLE1, MLE2. The transitions area is over here. Again, this is where I cut the cameras. This is also where I turn on and off the key. Uh, whatever I select is what's going to be, um, uh, it's going to go to next. So if I highlight key, if I hit cut, it turns the key on, right? If I hit the background button, it's going to select the source from the preview row down there. And this should be my master fade to black, the far button on the right bottom. That's a button that we've programmed into the switcher. It's not always programmed, I found. Uh, and some switchers have a uh, master fade to black button uh, on their own independently. But this is where our master fade to black is. And what that does, if there's a key that's on, if I want to get rid of, okay, and just fade to black, boom. It, everything, all the sources, MLE1, MLE2, everything just fades it down to black regardless. Essentially, we're doing, we're, we're keying, uh, we're doing another key effect here. But um, that's how the switcher works. Again, listen as a switcher. Ready one, take it. Ready two, take it. So fast, fast, fast. So uh, let's see if I can find the source. So let's pretend this is ready one. Ready one, take it. Ready camera two. Is that taking it? No, because the key's on, fade, fade up. How's that, can you see it? Yeah, I think you can. I'm not even gonna look, because I think it's there. Uh, ready camera one, take one. Ready two, take it. Ready one, take it. Ready camera three, take three. Ready two, take two. Boom, take, 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 take. Fast, because we need to take it. I'm about to sit down. It's a good place to put a cut when I'm sitting. Take the shot, right? In, in uh, single cam editing, you can time it out. You can work it to the frame. Not so much with, with live editing, or uh, with live, which is essentially what we're doing with the switcher, and take it, and take it, and take it. So you have to be responsive. One of the biggest problems that I found with switching is that people have their heads up. The switcher's watching the show, and they're, they look down to take the cut, or they to, to, to do the effect. Don't do that. Head down. Boom. Take, 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 take. As you get better, more comfortable, then you can start to look up. But when you're learning, keep your head down. Ready, and take it. Ready, and take it. And take it. And take it. And take it. And they're sitting and take it. I've seen lots of shots missed because the switcher takes that extra half second. Boom, the person's already sitting and we take it and we take it too late. So uh, be careful um, for that. Um, so we have a key, a key again. It's sort of like a keyhole that cuts something out and puts it over top of live video or a still. And it superimposes uh, the, uh, the effect. Uh, it superimposes our... Um, on to our, our uh, source onto the, um, to the program row. So uh, I like keys. I like them a lot. They're kind of fun and fancy. And then again, there's different types of keys. You have a DVE effect, right? So that key is a, um, oops, uh, DVE, uh, you, you saw it earlier. Um, but the DVE, the digital video effect, it takes the whole picture. I can make it smaller, I can do a box zoom with it, I can shrink the picture down and put it in the corner, but it, it actually moves the whole thing, right? Digital video effect. And then, the again, uh, the chroma key cuts out the color, 
right? Cuts out the blue or the green. Typically we use that kind of lime green because most people don't wear green. So if you're on camera, don't wear green or blue. Uh, so there you go. Uh, all right, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's see, uh, wait the, for the next shot. Let's look at the quiz. I'm just going to go through a kind of a quick review as I finish up, just things to remember. Now, when you're in the control room, um, the picture that we want to see that's next on air is the preview. That's what's next if you're doing switching properly. And then when I say take, it'll switch to the program monitor. Another thing to remember is when you're switching, the switcher never assumes, even though you've blocked the script, you understand the script, you never just jump ahead. If the director doesn't call something, you don't take it just because you think, oh, I'm saving the director. Uh, there's supposed to be a cut to camera three here, so I'm just going to go to three. You do not do that. You wait for the director. If the director misses it, it's on the director. It's not on you. So be careful. Only do what the director says to do. Ready one, take it. If the director doesn't say it. Sometimes when I'm switching, I'll say, uh, ready one, especially in an interview, ready one, uh, and take three, right? Because sudden, suddenly something happens on three. I try to ready that shot. Ready one, uh, no, oh, ready, ready three, take three. So don't always assume because the director is, knows what they're doing uh, and we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, so um, again, ready camera one, you ready the one, you take it. Ready camera two, ready to fade up. Uh, at the beginning, you fade, fade up from black, you fade down to black at the end. Uh, ready to bring in the key, bring in the key, lose key. This is the way that we, that we talk. Um, and... Um, the, oh, another thing too, there's a volume control button here. This just controls the volume of the studio control room. It does not actually control the master volume of the show. So if it sounds low, you're like, audio, bring up the sound, you might double check and see what the master volume is doing. And every studio has one. Uh, so you can uh, just be aware that uh, what you're hearing through the speakers is not, uh, is not actually what's necessarily being recorded. It's just a comfortable level for the people in the um, uh, in the control room. Again, the master word, magic word, standby. That means get ready, boom, the show is leaving. Program up in 10, 9, 8. Bring your block script, have it ready to go. All the instructions are on the script in advance so that when you get here, you're not wasting your time uh, doing things that you, um, uh, you're not... You're not wasting your time trying to figure out the shots. This is not the time to figure out the shots. You do this earlier. That's why we do uh, pre-planning and paperwork. And again, just a reminder that as the director, you are, uh, you are driving the show. You're watching your shots. Is there enough headroom? Camera one, more headroom. Camera two, less headroom, more nose room. But give them some direction. Camera one, tilt up for more headroom. Camera one, pan left for no more nose room. You're going to give them some very clear directions. So those are the positions here. I'm going to show you one other positions and then we're finished. All right, we're almost done. The last thing we're going to look at right now is the final position, the video shader, also known as the CCU operator, the camera control unit operator. And this is the person that is going to shade the cameras. So this is where I adjust the black level and the white, but black, uh, black and white level of my camera. And I do that by adjusting the iris control and the master black uh, switch here. Um, so I, uh, what looks like a little mini switcher right here, I can select my sources. Typically I would select the cameras. Unfortunately the studio is dark and so they're turned off. But here's I can select any one of these images and once I've selected an image I can then um, use the waveform monitor in conjunction with this better quality monitor here to make the picture look fabulous. Fabulous. Now the monitors over there those are okay but they're not going to give me the accurate color that this higher end Ikigami professional HD monitor is going to give me. This is going to give me the best color rendition of anything we have in the studio. And then I'm going to use my waveform monitor to make sure that the brightness levels stay within the parameters that are required. Now, when we're using um, standard HD, the white level should be set to 100, which is the top line. You'll see there's, you can't see it it's so far away, but uh, on the monitor, there's the, the top line that says 100. And then down at the bottom, you'll see 7.5, and that's where I want the blacks to touch. So I want the blacks to, to, um, to be within the, the, the range of 7.5 blacks down here, whites up here at 100, 
And again, if it's 4K, it's 105 on the top end. It is a bit more on the end. And so you, you would do that by adjusting the knobs. And again, this is something you'll get into in not in uh, intermediate, sorry, not in introduction class, but in an intermediate. But just what you need to know primarily is the video shading is done here for each of the cameras. I can also white balance the cameras from up here. Well, I don't, I can't, I do. I white balance the cameras from here. And um, I can even call the cameras from here as well. So uh, the video shader, that is what they do right here. Now let's just make sure, check my notes that I've got everything. And then that will be it. If it's, if it's uh, pure black, there's too, you lose texture detail, too much, too high on the black level, it looks washed out, but you'll see that. On the uh, iris control, uh, too low looks really dull and too high looks washed out and blown out. So my white jacket will give a problem to the video shader. And um, I think that's it. So um, again, iris down makes the shot darker or brighter and we just want to be careful of our exposure and that's again part of this has to do with the lighting and the way we set up our studio and if we have a hot spot sometimes we might want to adjust the the lighting take it down a little bit move the light change the way it hits the wall uh, because we're maybe it's too hot for the cameras so that's the studio control room uh, i'm sorry it's not uh, in person uh, it's always uh, fun to come in and, and do things but at least you know the the, the director the AD, the script assistant over there, the switcher in the middle controls the switcher. Beautiful switcher, by the way, from a company called Ross, a Canadian company. We're thrilled to have it. A fantastic piece of technology. And then over here, the CCU operator, the, the video shader. Uh, again, the tech staff will be doing this. You don't need to worry about it. But during shows, you'll see the tech staff come in. Next year, intermediate, it's you. So there you go. That's, the, that's it in a nutshell. That's our video shading position, the switcher, the director, the, uh, the associate director, and the way our studio actually works. And it's an exciting place to be. Uh, not so exciting when everything's turned off, but when there are people in the room and the place is hopping, it's fantastic. No, it's fabulous. So that's it from the studio control room. I'm Dr. Gary Gould in 360 and in normal video. We'll see you again and thanks for watching.